Hi everybody. Let's talk a little more about linear equations. What I want to look at in this video is verifying the solution of an equation. So once we get a solution or if we're given one, how can we check to see if it really is a solution to our equation? And I have two pretty brief examples in this first part of the video, okay? So um, here's what we got first. So okay, here's how we do it. This is the procedure. Okay, when you have your solution, your given number or your solution, okay, you want to substitute it into the equation, the original equation, and determine whether you're getting a true statement or a false statement. So if you look over here, if you get something that looks sort of like this, 0 equal to negative 3, you know that is false, right? You know that's not true. If that's the case, then you reject that solution. It's not a solution. If you simplify both sides of your equation, once you substitute in, and you get an equality, you get something that's equal, for example, 0 equal to 0, you know that that is a true statement, and so you've verified your solution. So let's check out A here, okay? Determine whether negative 3 is a solution of x plus 4 is equal to 1. So especially when you have negative numbers, you're going to open a set of parentheses where your x is. Okay, and just rewrite the whole equation. This is a good habit to get into, so in case you have other operations involved with that x there in that part of the equation, if you have a negative value you're plugging in, it'll make that pan out a lot easier. It'll come out a lot nicer. Your negative rules will um, be a lot clearer to you. In this case, we just have 4 minus 3, really. That's all we have in this. So, yes, 1 is equal to 1, which is a true statement, meaning what? Yes, it's a solution. So, x equal to negative 3 is a solution. Okay, one more time. Let's try this one more time. Let's have this example, B. We'll call this one B. Let's determine whether positive 5 is the solution of 9x equal to 42. Now, as you well know, when, not, when two figures, two numerals are written next to each other with nothing in between, it means multiply, right? This is like 9 times x, right? Okay, FYI, in case you've forgotten that, okay? But what we're going to do is we're going to substitute a 5 in for x. So we're checking x equal to 5. So where we have an x value, we're going to open a set of parentheses. And we'll plug in our 5. Just see what you get. 9 times 5 is what? If you said 45, you got it. 45 is equal to 42. Is this true or false? This is very false, right? We're about three off there. So 45, okay, let me put the therefore signs here, okay? Therefore, since 45 is not equal to 42, then x equal to 5 is not a solution. Solve this equation, then we'll verify our solution by using the checking process we just went over. First, I want you guys to look through this and find your x terms, any term that contains the variable x. Note that these are terms we're going to want to get over to one side of the equation. And then the constant terms, that's the ones that are by themselves. There's no variable attached to these, right? Those are going to be on the opposite side of the x terms. So what we're going to do is we're going to use our properties of equality. Let's work on getting this subtracted x, this minus, really there's a pretend 1, right? There's an understood 1, I should say, on in the front of that. So we'll work on getting that one over to the left side. Then we'll work on the 20. But if it's subtracted, we're going to want to add that amount. So plus x to both sides. So plus x. Now if you want to see that 1 in order to combine those terms correctly, that's fine. You can go for it. Do that. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to combine the coefficients, right? 3 plus 1. And what we do then is tack on the x. So we'll have 4x's there. Okay, plus 20 is equal to 12. Bring the 12 down. And subtracted x plus x. These cancel to give us the 0 here. So 12 plus 0 is just 12. Okay. Now let's work on getting this 20 over to the right side. Okay, if it's added plus 20, we're going to subtract 20, okay, from both sides, okay? Both sides of the equation. As long as we do the same thing to both sides, you see we did the same thing, we added x, we added x, then we're keeping the balance of the equal sign. What I do to one side, I must do to the other side. So let's go ahead. 20 minus 20, that's 0. In other words, it cancels out. And we just bring down that 4x. Now 12 minus 20. Now if you have a little trouble with subtracting the negatives, what you can do is do this. You can say, what's 20 minus 12? Okay, that's 8, right? But since the larger number in my subtraction is negative, that's the number, that's the sign that'll be on my difference of negative 8. So you give the sign to, the sign comes from the larger number. It's just one way to think of subtraction there. At any rate, just be careful with your signs, okay? Now, what do we do now? If we have multiplication, like here, 4 times x, we're going to do the inverse operation, right? We do the opposite. In this case, the opposite is dividing. So we're going to take that 4, right? Since it's multiplied times x, we're going to divide 4 on both sides of this equation. Okay? Here's what happens with the x term. 4 over itself is essentially 1. And all we're left with on the left side is x. So we're coming closer, very close to our equation, our solution. Sorry, I got tongue tied. So negative in division. If there's one negative value, then our result, our quotient, will be negative. A negative times a positive is po negative, and a negative divided by a positive is negative. 8 divided by 4 is 2. So here's our solution, you guys. Let's come back here on the side, and we're going to go up, take that original equation. See, here's our original equation, and we're going to check it, okay? And I'll go ahead and put that in red since it's a check. Okay, so here's our check. Just like we did before to verify our solution, okay? So we're going to take x. Wherever we see an x in the equation, we're going to open a set of parentheses. So 3x plus 20. My pen is kind of skitzing out on me. Sorry about that. 3x plus 20 is equal to 12 minus x. Open a set of parentheses. So this negative is over here, right? That's this guy, and it's on the outside of, this, of the x, so it's separate. All right, so wherever we have an open set of parentheses, we're going to plug in the solution we found, which was negative 2. Okay, so now let's kind of go through and just do the math, simply. Follow your order of operations, that's really important. Now, we're going to work just on the left side first, okay? So we have 3 times negative 2, which is negative 6, plus 20. We can bring down that equal sign. All right, 20 minus 6 is what? 14. Let's go to the right side. 12 minus a negative 2 is essentially 12 plus 2, which is 14. Okay, so since we get a true statement, right, since 14 is equal to 14 is true, then x is equal to negative 2 is a good solution. It's a valid solution. Okay, 
So, good job, you guys. I hope that you guys are um, practicing and doing well. Make sure you get in touch with me if you have any questions about any of this. Now you know how to check your solutions. And essentially, now you have the answers, or let's say verification for your answer to any linear equation, actually any equation that we solve this semester. Now you know how to check. It's like you have your own key. Awesome, huh?